So in this situation here, we pretty much do not get any things that these people would have to do with the process. Well, they probably won't anyway, but I mean, you're factory. Unless there's stuff nearby that's been saying, well, it doesn't matter whether their opinion is bad in that location. Everything else on the least cost path says we're going right through it. But that would happen whether you're using it or not. My modal thing is using it because that's, that's something that we're going to do. So, fairly complicated, but a cool example of a, uh, of a really nice application for a lot of visual application that you can distribute to these people and this presentation is a good presentation. Well, we've got one more presentation this morning from Anderson Sandys, and then we've got a uh, break out there. And we'll jump right here and Anderson is going to carry on a little bit more about this supplement project, and hopefully give you a message to the Those of you that were in this workshop yesterday saw the manual that. He's in process of developing. And for those of you who weren't, you guys can also to open that up and just flip, flip through it a little bit. Let's see. No, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I was asked to do a report on uh, SOCMAT, that's the project I'm involved with, the same project as my colleague, Rosa Stephenson. And uh, before I begin this presentation, I would like to let you know that not all of the members were able to provide me with their information. So I'm going to name all the members, but uh, I do not have time to include information about them because it lacks some information in time. So, SOCNET. SOCNET, SOCNET places history and the historical social sciences in a multidisciplinary computational environment to examine historical events across the virtual geographic spaces in complex social networks. So SOCMET uh, works to enable historians and historical social scientists to form, manage, visualize, and analyze geographic integrated narratives about social networks. It studies social networks in the first global age to build a foundation for further studies of space and social networks, and to encourage development of skills needed to encourage uh, spatial analysis in the social sciences. So, uh, we are being funded by the National Science Foundation, uh, the, NSF, or the NSF Office of Cyber Infrastructure, uh, Professor J.B. Jack Owens is the principal investigator, along with Name One. Uh, uh, Professor J.B. Owens at Ohio State University. Professor Jay Moore at uh, the University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma State University for giving me for getting this information uh, wrong. So, other participants include Daniel Beams, Richard Quinta Lutra, Barbara Stephenson, Russell Stephenson, Adam Zara. David Jackson, Scott Pearson, me, Anderson Sanders, Mark Van Mark Michael Borden, John R. McIntosh, Greg Belosier, Jacob Petro, Paul Benjamin, Henry Pollard Jr., and Mike Wapowitz. So Professor Jack Lewis is the project principal investigator and creator. SOCNET wrote the early of his early project, DIOPNET, Dynamic Operation Networks, and Professor Owen's goal is to understand complex dynamic nonlinear human systems and their problem, the problem, the problem, their problem with natural system by inserting social network analysis into a dynamic GIS computational environment. And of course, his research has resulted in numerous graphic papers, panels, publications, and posters. You have his email address. And, and then we have the second principal investigator, Professor Maywan. Uh, her research has resulted in numerous graphic papers, discussion panels, posters, presentations. 
She has contributed to the disciplines of spatial temporal analysis, GIS temporal model for events, spatial temporal analysis of text, text mining and history. And she's working closely with uh, students, Rain Holmes here, Jacob Kentro, and Rick Floyd. Paul uh, Gingerly, he is now the director of the, of the Semiotic Technologies Laboratory in Rome. Me, I'm writing the medical manual for historians and history of social scientists with Barbara, Dr. Barbara Stephenson and David Dixon. I'm going to show you this work once I am told you this, with, with this report. I am slowly developing a website for SubNet. And uh, uh, my personal result, research has resulted in one paper, JS functions from the perspective of users. It was accepted at false for G2011 Denver. And uh, this, this paper is being, uh, is being also written by Daniel Ames and Keith Weber at Ohio State University. Dr. Barbara Stephenson, she has been working on social network analysis programs mapping her own data in the Pinos and Nomos principles trade voyage data. She has been working with Scott Pearson, subject member of the Gazetteers from the Crystal Data in the 1590 Spanish census and direct the Map Remo Manual Project with me and my colleague David Jackson, as well as conducting research in Bordeaux, France, in writing about the research that she has been conducting. Uh, then we have Daniel Ames, uh, well, he is the project manager of MapRino. MapRino software it is extensively used in your projects, and his important research in software has resulted in, uh, resulted in many graphic papers, discussion panels, and posters. He is supervising my work, and I am uh, very lucky to have him as a my advisor. Uh, we have David Dixon, he is directing the Method of Manual Project with me and with Dr. Barbara Stephenson. Uh, we have Green Pillows here, he wrote and improved a Python program which can perform token and resolution for local configuration and place names appearing in historical texts. And he participated in Oklahoma's undergraduate research day at the state capital in the second of all research intensive universities for his poster and presentation. We have Monica Wachowicz. Uh, the only information he was able to get from her is that she's now at the University of New Brunswick in Canada. We have Michael Lee, Russell, Russell Stephenson, uh, it is important research conducted with the subject member with uh, Dr. Vitekin Tabutra and software, and this, the software he has been developing, which you have seen. Um, his work has resulted also in graphic papers, discussion panels, invitations, and posters. Uh, we have uh, graduate student Scott Pearson. He is currently creating a gazetteer and map locations that come from the 1590 Spanish census. He's also mapping uh, in a crystal data with uh, Dr. Barbara Stephenson. He is contributing to a paper to be presented at the Social Science and History Association in Boston, United States, in November of 2011. And he is also beginning his last semester of graduate school at Idaho State University in Lake August. He is uh, currently pursuing a Master of Arts in Historical Resources Management. And finally, we have Professor Vinton Pantabutra. Uh, his research has been exposed to you already through my colleague, my colleague, Mr. Stephenson. He, he has concentrated in developing software prototypes for his ILE software, thereby also uh, solidifying the theory of ILE. He wrote a temporal GIS paper that is based on his intentionally linked entities, ILE like linked data structures, and his work closely with graduate student and subject member Chris Stephenson. 
it is very important to search uh, in software. Uh, it both can result in numerous reference uh, papers, especially in those publications and posters. So, uh, as, uh, as my colleague Russ has mentioned to you, uh, Dr. Pitagutra's uh, model, the, the ILE model, facilitates flexible connections within the database to permit the creation of more complicated entities. So ILE offers us the possibility to link together all of the aspects of events in order to extend them and to create a sequence to other events that all uh, to grasp the consequences. And uh, if you are more interested in uh, Professor Pinterbutra's research, which is uh, it's complex, and uh, I, uh, because I have been focusing my energy on the main law, I'm not able to discuss this research as well as Russ. So I will, if you're interested, please visit uh, Professor Pinterbutra's internet page, which is, uh, which is uh, the, described in the, in the presentation, and uh, you, you also have access to this email address. And finally, uh, I would like to thank uh, the National Science Foundation. As I already mentioned, uh, our project is funded by the <coughs> Office of Cyber Infrastructure, uh, Professor Owens, and many of our recent investigators, and uh, several well, recently investigators, um, that professor, uh, Daniel Haynes, is one of them, and uh, I'm very glad that SOCNAT invests so uh, much in, uh, in uh, the development of human resources. And with that being said, I would like now to show you the manual that, I am, that I'm writing under the supervision of Dr. Barbara Stephenson and with my colleague David Dixon from Idaho State University. So this man this manual is uh, is a manual for the humanities. So we find a lot of resistance from historians when we try to place history in space, when we try to analyze how space has shaped important historical events. And a way to examine how space has had a role in history is by using GIS, because we have this technology. Unfortunately, we find a lot of resistance from historians and historical social scientists and people with the humanities. They, uh, they resist the software, they do not think uh, they can work with it. So one of the purposes of the project is to develop this manual so that we can, we can have GIS and we can have specifically map people disseminated among people from the humanities. So at this moment we have seven functional chapters and we are going to expand this obviously uh, so far enough uh, the master, but uh, we have seven tutorials, I will walk you through the tutorials very quickly so you can get an idea of what we are doing. Um, so exercise one very briefly shows you how to download map in the and um, we are doing this. This is very simplistic, it's for the more technical audience. And uh, we are, the language that we are applying to this manual is also very simplistic. We are starting from a very basic approach. What, what is vector data? What type, what, what, the, what types of vector data do we have? Line data polygon. And uh, let me um, I'm just uh, we walk you through this very quickly to show you uh, what we have done so far. So in exercise two, they are going, the purpose of this exercise is to create a core class map depicting the foreign born population in the United States in the in the, in the treaty with earlier, the early treaty with century.